Oh my gosh. Okay, now we're hacking. Now we're hacking, guys. Hacking intensifies. <laughs> this is not fair. <laughs> this is this is not fair. Not fair. Well, what's going on, everybody? This is Fry. So today we're bringing back, after many years of not doing this deck, Aggro Rose, particularly the card I wanted to try in an Aggro deck, a card we hardly ever use. Uh, but it's justified here is the Mars Flytrap. This really, you know, is kind of like half a Bullseye card. Um, so one costs 2-2, two, two, and it's going to be stealing Block Meter. will be giving us a uh, Block Charge as well, which, uh, who knows, maybe we'll end up blocking one of these games. Usually you're playing the aggressive minions, and they're just trying to remove them off the field. A uh, good card, of course, is Haunted Pumpkin on turn one. Shellery also is a good card because it adds two damage and a lane protects one of your guys. Uh, it's kind of like also a one cost two, one bullseye because if it's combined with another minion, it doesn't add block meter charge. Team ups only charge the block meter one. So if it's used like that, uh, it's going to be good. Same thing sort of with the corn to add one damage to Colonel Pulse. Uh, it can also remove things away, uh, cheap chump blockers away from your minions, and it also is going to be a base. Uh, for the Elderberry. Really not a lot of good threes. We could have run Sporticus. Maybe I'll keep an eye on Sporticus instead of the uh, Colonel Pulp. I want to try the Colonel Pulp for now, especially because we're running the Elderberries, which is a really uh, good strike through card. So the late game is going to have strike through. It's going to be Elderberry. Turn three, you're just going to make a combo. We have enough ones and twos to be able to play uh, both of those on turn two, which is uh, on turn three, which is arguably going to be better than just playing a Sporticus or a Cool Bean. Bloomerang is a strike through. Uh, really big strike through minion is the Astricado, and if they don't remove this, then playing Brainana or having any strike through minion on the field, Brainana means that your strike through minion is going to get hit, hit again. Anything that's not blocked is going to hit again, plus you're going to be adding um, four damage to the field. They really are going to be having, instead of chump blocking your minions, to be removing them with tricks, and that makes the Brainana. Uh, gonna be better so, uh, in combination with all the strike that we have in this deck. Uh, I'll even like, but you know, an extra team up Colonel Pulse just to protect, you know, one cost, protect your Rotobega, uh, make it do four damage again on turn two is worth it. Of course, the uh, Apple Saucer is also gonna be another strike through card in the late game. Let's see how this deck performs. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into the games. Uh, we're gonna go for regular bets today, so if you think this deck will go at least eight wins at a time, vote yeah, seven and three or fewer vote no over here at the live stream, twitch.tv forward slash. From up. Yeah, go nuts is definitely too slow. You gotta be making a strong aggro play every single every single turn in a deck like this. We so we have one, we two, and then some combo. I feel like this might be a little weak against Z Mac. We don't want as many one health minions. So this is a lot better. This should be fine. I'll probably start playing on heights and maybe protect this with the uh, the corn. That is fine. We're definitely not going for the trade there. Um, so it's gonna be... Is there a reason not to play this on the ground? It doesn't really matter. We're gonna go face for four. So we'll have a number of plays. We can play these two next turn, just Apple Saucer if he passes. Uh, we can also Weed Whack a key minion. We need to we'll kind of save Weed Whack to open up a lane. I think also like Godify into Corn can, can open a lane too. Keeping lanes open is pretty important in a... In a deck like that. La 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 la. It's basically just a chump blogger. Um, we want a player on the ZMAX Super, so I'm gonna commit this. And we will go from there. Good turn two play. This C could kill in a ZMAX Super, just do two and also kill this, so... Definitely want to keep something going on the field. And again, if this takes two, if he removes the pumpkin and he takes two from the apple saucer, again, the corn does remove this off the field. There's the C-Max Super. Luckily, even though that's a really good defensive card, but at least he didn't get more from that. Just trying to break through here. Let's see what happens. Playing Corn this turn is really good to set up Elder Bear. I feel like we're just going to be usually playing this on, on this turn. 
Uh, so it's easy. Weed whack. Corn. And, uh, go here. We kind of sort of want to protect this one. Elderberry has 4 health, which is a hard amount of damage for Zemek to do. He's not going to play a 4 attack minion in this lane. So we're doing really good. Stealing blocks. Hell yeah. What about freeze? Do we freeze for a card? I wonder how useful freeze is. I guess it kind of keeps a minion alive, so we'll, we'll hold on to that. Doesn't really do anything to freeze, it's just burning a card. I think the one one cost freeze is good enough here. Don't drop that Stompadon, so he's relying on this not dying, but obviously it dies very, very, very badly. We're also getting five more damage in, so that's really good. Oof. Great plays by the z mac here, so we just gotta proc the block and we'll be good to go. His z mac super is gone, I'm so happy. He only, only has just the Lightning Bolt left, so the other two powers aren't really going to do anything this game. Apple Saucer is is happening next turn. I think it's just going to be Rotobega, Apple, and uh, Bloomerang. Yep. Oh, whoops. I messed up. <laughs> I counted too high. Uh, I guess we're playing this now... Let's freeze, see what we get. Alright, I guess we're just playing this. Uh, this is just a lot of threats on the field right now. He actually used a Disco Floor to chump lock there, Anything which is else weird. that can be used instead of Brainana. Uh, you don't need the Brainana, you can just put like another... I don't know, is there another Strike Your Minion? I'm trying to think, maybe, um, Laser Bean? Probably just run Spartacus instead of Brainana. Could just be better, just have a cheaper card. Banana is a bit expensive for an aggro deck. Should be okay here. We have 10 health. He has a lot less than that. And that makes guaranteed. Uh, unless we were to... Well, yeah, anyway. It was guaranteed even if we passed there because this only does one splash. z too slow for this thing. Hell yeah. And we're 1 0 just like that. for a solid one drop. That's nice. Again, you keep this for turn three, and we'll keep it four. Uh, Rotobega is really good in this matchup. I mean, really, really good. The, the Haunted Pumpkin, I think, is just going to go in lane four here. Because we want to be able to use a Rotobega to protect it next turn. Maybe here? Doesn't really matter. Been three. Rotobega can be used to, I don't know, Toxic Waste Sim doesn't really do much against this deck, so... Uh, Haunted Pumpkin, a really good card against Super Brains. Really no way of dealing with that on turn one. Unless he plays Swabby and then Smoke Bombs it or something. So Rotobega on two, Rotobega on three. The question is, do we want to, um... Well, we can... well, there's actually no lane to do extra damage, so we might as well do it like this, right? Weakest hero against this deck is probably Super Prince, because he doesn't have field clear or small removal. Uh, you can go with him throwing him, stuff like that, but this is a tough matchup. You never want to see Haunted Pumpkin when you're Super Prince. Do you like Blooming Heart or Jacko Lantern? Well, they're, they're different cost cards in different classes, but I think Blooming Heart overall is the better card because it's so cheap. Symbolic Yeti. Um, so this is interesting. I'm going to... Where does the Beam Me Up want to go here? 
for? Oh, it would he'd be taking too much heat. I think we just play this here. Oh, this lane's kind of protected. Where does this go? Well, I guess here for extra damage. It's such a weird consideration, but we do 5 damage in this lane now. I don't know what he's going to even do on turn 3. Beam Me Up is the most control play he can do, and he's probably not even running that along t space time. Okay, teleport, nice. He can, uh, could block a lot of damage if he puts a 3 or more health minion in this lane. That's fine, but he's opting to take all of this, so there's 5. Here's proc the block, and he's actually going to take 4 more. This is not... he got to block the pumpkin there, man. Yeah, he'll block six damage here. You're playing against aggro, clearly. So now he's down to five. Ugh. <laughs> you can have the the space time. So the fa the fact this lives doesn't matter here. It's not a consideration at all. I could also just bloomerang and take this out. Um, I don't want to play into chop, so I'm actually gonna make this play. We have five damage in lane two. Four and three, and then three and four. It's just can't. It's doing okay. This man ain't gonna catch. Oh, are you kidding me? He got that from Pumpkin. Okay, okay, okay. God damn it. <laughs> Almost changed the score there. He's actually in the game, technically. So it's gonna be these two. Strike through for the win. Uh, blocks. I'm just thinking about block supers. You want the strike through minion to be second. Because then his super won't won't kill this. Na, 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 na. So he's gonna have to teleport a guy or do something to lane two. We'll have to like smoke bomb it and he has it though. So we could roll a one and win. Ooh, this guy's actually in the game. We'll probably end up godifying the uh the raptor, since it's gonna have six attack. We need a leap. We need a leap. Okay. We need a leap. We need a leap. Go. <laughs> we need the two damage here. Do need a leap. I think this is the one that needs protect anymore. So we have lethal, a bunch of lethals. We need a leap. We Thank need you, Symbolic leap. Yeti, for gifting five more subs. Hell yeah! It's twenty-three total. Na 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 na. Okay. Got him. Super. There. It's still lethal. And freeze! He actually survives! Well, okay. God damn. Uh, yeah. We'll use that to clear lane, maybe. Next turn. We still should win this. <laughs> Elderberry, love to see it. I don't know if he's going for Pogo or what. I guess we'll put this dry. Landscaper, dear god, okay. <laughs> he got that from Frosty Mustad. This guy's got godlike conjures. Absolutely godlike. We need one damage to win. Spade, that doesn't do it. Deadly doesn't help. Bonus attack doesn't help. Nah, he's done. He's done. He's done. He's done. <laughs> Good game. Hell yeah. Do you think the maxed out solar flare aggro deck is good? Yeah, for sure. Underrated. I don't really go for it anymore. I feel like we've just... You know, we have the budget deck. People tell me with the aggro solar flare deck they hit ultimately for the first time. People tell me that. Every couple of weeks. Hell yeah. Alright, so two Elder Berries is too much. It's fine starting hands. Keep some strike through for the light game too. Especially on the ground, like, not on heights, and Morticia's gonna have a hard time dealing with the, the strike through. Uh, question is, which one of these do we do first? 
It doesn't make that big of a difference. We usually kind of die anyway to summoning or bats. We're just going to try to draw it out. So I'll play on the ground here. Because if, if that's the if that's the scorch, then that's what we want to see. Uh, in case he doesn't have summoning or bats, it doesn't really matter though. I mean, this is the better card, so maybe I'll play the less good card. All right. Didn't have it. And it's bulls. That, that time it was bullseye plus bullseye plus. Actually, it's real the one. Hell yeah. This Roto's weird. He didn't make a play though, huh? I'm probably just gonna play the Roto next turn. Enjoy the pumpkin. Extinction event isn't a monster card, is it? That would suck. Superpower could just be, um, it could just be, it might be Acid Rain, something your Batsy would have played. So, it's either, it's probably Evaporate, maybe it's Acid Rain. Should I play into Acid Rain here? I think I do. If he has the Acid Rain, he definitely plays it here. If not, he's just holding on to an Evaporate. There's a Nibble. Uh, so we're up against Control and Morticia, which is going to be a pretty good matchup for him. We've done a net so far of zero damage. It's nice having the 1-1, one, one, though, and the empty block meter uh, for the Elderberry here, so that's cool. But again, the rockets are going to be rough. The Brainanas are actually what we need here. That's fine. So we do this, make him play the lunchbox, and we get five damage in. Well... I think so. We might be able to buff this next turn into Brainanas. The Brainanas are really what we need here. He didn't use the lunchbox, so it must be OTK Cat Lady. Who doesn't use the lunchbox there? He's running Extinction Event and Nibble. It's some kind of control deck. It's gotta be OTK Cat Lady. Why would he not use the lunchbox, bruh? Bruh. Okay, we're playing around Acid Rain instead of Alley News. I think. Hell yeah, this into Brainana. Astricado is exactly what we wanted to see. Well, actually, have Brainana on six, and then if he kills this, there's the Evaporate. See, he wanted to just be able to play it. Evaporate with Immortition, and you're starting him, man. Game losing. Yes, he did not have Alien so now the Brainana does twice as much. It literally does. He's teleporting lane one. Nice. Teleport Goat. It doesn't do anything. Here's five damage. Was that a Cali roll now? Dear God. Uh, well. Well, no, there's no Cali rolls because we played Mars Flytrap. Whoopsies! Come on, pass. Pass and we win. Actually, play and we win, too. We have Astricado. So there's Brainana number one. la di da di da Okay, here's nine damage for free. <laughs> Empty block meter. Let's go! It's too much now. He just doesn't have the field, the big field clear. There's no part in Morticia's going to play to come back from this. Especially if he passes again. Even if he does. If he plays, we're just doing this. It's probably Teleportation Zombie. Uh, in which case he can play a 5 cost card. I mean, it would be sad if it was a Supernova Garg for both of these. Is Brainana just better? Probably is. Because if he blocks... Uh, he doesn't lose to Brainana here, though. I think it's just going to be... Actually... Yes. Yeah, it's Teleportation Zombie, Supernova Garg, and then and roll a 3. And... He'll have to get exactly bats to block this one. Acid Rain would not be enough. Burning something for a teleport. I don't know, I'm supposed to play your Supernova Guard, but that's not in play anymore. There's the, uh... The, yeah. The, yeah. We're three and up. So, who know that Brainana would be the perfect support to an aggro deck? Because if you're playing against control, it just wins. Hell yeah. Is he milled? No. What do you say? Wow, who's saying he's milled? Oh, was he milled before he made that play? No. He wasn't milled. He played Teleportation Zombie. How could he have been milled?
Bro, oh my gosh. And Rotovig is good. I mean, it's a curve. Should I go for a three? Man, it's tough getting rid of one of these. I think we do go for the turn three play, though. Still gonna go for it. All right. We gotta really play efficient the first few turns here. So it's gonna be... The question is, should, be, should I be going face I, with the Rotovega next turn? I think the answer is yes. So Pumpkin's gonna go here, and this will at least do two. Maybe not, though. If he fronts us with the minions, probably better to just kill these two and open up the lanes with the Rotovega. Doesn't really matter. We got Rotovegas for years. Definitely what we're doing. Four damage. Good. Yeah, I know. We still don't know what the Yeti was all about. Ah, so that's a really good beam yet. Really good. Hell yeah. Gotify might solve a problem here. No. Well, I think this Rotobago is worth it here. Should I go to fight this one now to kill it? I don't think so, because it dies next turn. We don't really care about our face, we care about maintaining our aggression and momentum. So that keeps, again, this alive. It's another 4 damage threat. Yes, Shellery, finally seeing this. So underrated, especially with the Rotovegas. What a combo. Just gonna keep them alive. Maybe even kill something. Well, it does trade since we're. The Rotovegas are shooting in each other's lanes. So you can't deadly. La 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 la. Da dun da dun. This does clear our field, though. There's no way around it, either. I could go to fight this one. What does it actually do to go to fight it, though? It just dies instead of hitting face. It also prevents two cards from being drawn. I think it's gonna be go to fight, and then just applesauce. I'm drawing cards. It's probably the worst case scenario here. Oh, so these two die. It's not really matter. Procs the block, though. So we'll, we'll have him down to seven. With a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Teleports are not very good against Strike Through and Nana, which is what we have left here, so. Should be okay? I'm definitely playing this dry. Ugh, what is he doing? That wasn't very good. The first aggro rose was 2017. Cool. Do I want to block some damage? Let's say he bonus attacks. So he'll do 8, 9, 10. Uh, I think it's fine. Let's keep our strike through alive. The Brainana basically finishes him next turn. Well, let's see, I don't know. I don't know how he would even kill this. He does go for the bonus. I think this is fine, though. He's not going to have anything that kills us, you know, during the zombie phase. I guess Gadget Scientist uh, could. <laughs> so usually Brainana will just activate lane one. The worst case scenario right now is actually if he plays a Gravestone and it's Pogo. But yeah, that wins the game. Well. Oh. <sighs> We need to block anyway, so block into Godify doesn't do a damn thing. It's gotta be Brainana, and we'll just go for the win here. The question is, do I want to block the 4-3? This is a really close game, actually. I think we do, since we have another Brainana next turn. Let's live to next turn to win, then. Because we'll have the same thing. We're all- this is all if he- if he rolls a 3. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Na 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 
If we would block and then get transmogrify, it would be really sad if it mogged the lane 3 into... It's a very small chance, but you're right, Freeze would have ended up winning. His guy would end up winning, though. Oh, he used the guy. I don't know. Alright, that's a fine hand indeed. I think the uh, pumpkin goes in one here. It's not the one we want to cover with the elderberry. Elderberry wants to stay on the ground. It's also, they don't want this getting hit by acid rain. Might as well play it on heights. They don't want this on heights because alien. So we're off to a really good start. Even if he blocks us with something, hard to make a good trade. Uh huh. How hard do we play on acid rain? I think if he commits both brains on playing a minion, we'll go for the Rotobega. And then just re play the Apple Saucer on one next turn. La, la, la. Uh, so it's definitely not Rotobega. The question is, should I just weed whack here? It's so awkward with the curve. I don't think we do. Well, I don't think we do. I don't think we do. We want to be able to still play on curve. And this will go down to a 2-1 and probably will just be the uh, the upgrade from the Elder Burn. So, it's okay. Burr. Burr. <laughs> I don't know. And we still don't know its superpower. Nocturne. Ooh. 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 See, we can't play into Acid Rain here. This is rough. I think I just let this go now. And we go two, 1 and 2 and not play into Acid Which Rain so hard. Solar Flare or these Nuts? What's DN? These nuts. There's the acid. At least that's gone, though. This is actually a, a good target now for the elderberry, so. It probably also procs the block here, statistically. If we roll double twos. <laughs> I hope he doesn't roll three. I want I want to steal the block meter charge. Love the weed wag for lane clear here, though. No! He rolled a three. Come on, man. So we did four. There, there's the free. That's not a good freeze, bro, for two damage. This doesn't even draw a card. What is he doing, man? I don't know. Sometimes I don't even know. It's possible we'll play Elder Bearing one if he just plays like a, a big card in one. Then he can't alien his till next turn anyway. Cheap replacement for Roto Big It's kind of hard. Rose doesn't have a ton of aggro cards. Is there another team up or something? I don't know. Alright, so any place we play the Elderberry. Um. Any place we play the Elderberry, it dies. Playing it in four is not bad here. It's a lot of damage. We'll have another elderberry for next turn. There also is weed whack and then playing this, but I don't. It dies for kind of for free then. Playing this first, I don't see it. I think it's just elderberry in four still. We'll do the damage. We're doing seven, so it'll be six. We'll have very little block meter. I think this is worth it. We're just counting damage we're doing the face. Yeah, because if we played Rotobago, this would just hunt. This is fine. It gives him another card, which is sad. I feel like this is sort of a good answer to Elderberry, but not really in this situation. Uh, so we'll either play Elderberry or Bloomerang, and then we'll Weed Whack. Just keep playing on curve. Then we'll play the other one together with the Roto. The Acid Rain is gone, right? Acid Rain and Freeze were the cards he played. Oh, 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 oh. 
What are sports um, decks strong against? What are sports strong against? I'll have to think about that. <laughs> oh, so he overcommitted. Oh, that makes... I think that makes this easier. What's the play? Oh, this imp throwing imp. <laughs> I don't really get it. Wait, so what? what is the play here? Weed whack... Is it, it? I guess it's just elderberry, and we don't even weed whack. There's nothing to weed whack here. I'm playing vampire with no support. Very sad. I think the weed whack is. We want more damage here, and the weed whack is just more. Uh, it's having another minion for next turn, but the elderberry would have to be played on that next turn anyway. So Godify Weed Whack actually kills a big card to keep the Elderberry alive for an extra turn, which is cool. Here's more ones. I'd oh, love to see it. Well, probably just Godify whatever he plays here and then stack these two here. And he'll just have three three lethal threats then to deal with. I don't really see any lanes for the Rotobega. I don't know what that shark was about. <laughs> Not really sure. I don't get it. La 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 This can actually do something next turn. I'll, I'll just... I'll just go. But his last powers anyway are Galvanize and Blow. Oh, this would have played around Blow. I should have played it in case he rolls a 3. Okay. Does he have Dolphinado? I'm so confused right now what his superpowers are. He does, right? Him and Neptuner. Okay. Arm Wrestler used to be your crutch when everyone used to play Dishroom for two in front of it because they didn't read the cards. Alright, Dex 5 and 0. Oh, here's another huge Giganticus. Love how many HGs and Super Brains we're facing today. We'll love to see it. Uh, definitely get rid of the late game. This is fine. We'll draw into a 1 or a 2 here. Really excellent starting hint. Uh, I guess Pumpkin's going on heights, and then we can protect it. <sighs> well, actually, we can protect it with the Rotobega. Probably better if we play in four. I guess I'll go four. We kind of want to wait till turn three to play this anyway. We don't ever want to play it on two. Uh, is there any reason to, to have an option for Toxic Waste Imp? I don't think so. It's nice to have these two lanes for the Rotobega. Okay. I, I, I think in, in this matchup, that's actually not a bad play. He's preventing poor damage. We'll see what he does with it now. So the options are Telezombie, uh, which doesn't even kill this. Keeping the pumpkin alive is good either way. And if it's a swashbuckler, I mean, it's amazing. Could also be Monkey Pirate and Drone Engineer. Drone Engineer would never go here. So we're playing in Telezombie or, or Swashbuckler, both die. I mean, it, it blocks the, the damage again, but we actually have Tempo now. We also have a Freeze to correct the problem. Oh my gosh, this is a great starting hand. Great, great hand here. So it's going to be this and one, this and one, and freeze if we have the option. <laughs> Too bad. Uh, I am playing the Colonel, though. I'm playing the Colonel. Uh, just want to add damage to this lane and have uh, an Elderberry. Maybe this should have not gone on Heights, though, because, you know... Laser base alpha is not a great answer to this, and we probably want to be able to play this corn to correct something later. Also, the block meter is wonky. This would have given us more options. I kind of messed up there. This should have <laughs> instinctively playing on heights, but this should have gone on the ground. So I think we're going to freeze this and actually play Pumpkin here. And we'll see what we get from the freeze. Cool. Hmm. 
Then we'll just go all in. Be nice to roll a one. Well, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't have strike through environment. Teleportation station, yeah, that's something. I'm probably just gonna play the Elderberry on top of the corn in three now. And uh, it keeps it alive and protects us from this. <laughs> I know this lane looks really scary, but there you go. Not as scary as it looks. Five damage just wins. Too. We'll be playing into deadly bonus attack. If he has a bone, if he has just well, he can't play deadly bonus attack anymore. If he has just bonus attack, this definitely <laughs> plays around. Him. I think we're good, guys. But he was trying to... I don't know. He got double Vampire from Haunted Pumpkins. He got Rocket, though. Ugh. Okay. Burning a free teleport. Uh, so we only get two damage this turn. Oh. We're likely blocking. Ugh. We're kind of out of resources now. There's uh, no blocks, too. Ugh, okay. Free Nana is probably the best thing to get now. Not bad at all. So the vampire is actually hitting in one, so this is pretty safe. We're gonna use, we already, you know, it's either gonna be Weed Whack or Mog or Goat, and all of them, all of them make him lose this trade, so this actually, in case he blocks, does an extra four damage. And his guy, I guess he can play Block Guy here would save him. Okay. It's not guaranteed yet. Teleport for a card. There's nothing really playable here. Let's get. Uh, so whatever we get, it's just going to lane three, just to open up an extra lane in case he blocks. This is correct. Uh, three damage should win. Block meter. Okay, and then he would have to block and get exactly the dude, which is another 50-50. So. All right, <laughs> got out of that one. It looks like a vampire deck. It wasn't. How come you didn't play Elderberry in one last turn? Why should I? It didn't matter. I, it was gonna just protect the uh, lane three from the vampire. I was playing around him blocking, not around him having rocket signs. There was no way to play around him having rocket. In fact, it just made the Vampire grow less. No, that was definitely a better play. Think about it. Here's another HG, man. <laughs> Today is our day for aggro. <sighs> We're getting pumpkin in, like, almost every starting hand. Love to see it. Is Overshoot a good ability? Sometimes. For aggression, I guess. Speaking of aggression... I'm very likely protecting the corn with this next turn. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I like this in heights. Doesn't get frozen later. Um, if he plays space time, I'm actually gonna commit the corn to make him not conjure a second card, then do just dry, dry shellery. Let's see what he does here. Headstone Carver. Uh, so we could get, go for five damage. I think that is the play here. Uh, that's what we do. And whack. Again, it looks like a lot of resources to remove it, but the point is he'll have 11 health after turn two, which is pretty damn good. We really just want to top deck a one, two, or three here to complete this play since we have a lot of late game. Perfect. Could not be better. So he probably chump blocks this, and now... Um, Okay, I'm just thinking Teleportation Zombie one drop is a thing. It's also uh, Flame Face Trades. I I'm just thinking where the el where's the Elderberry going to be? We want it, it's this the corn dies, so we're probably going to play it on the Shellery. And not on this one. 
But I guess it's in the front anyway, so this is good. I'll do this here so Roto Vega has. I don't know. I can't really. I can't tell if Roto Vega is just better in four, so it always hits the water. There's Flame Pay, so it's a big fat trade. But we also. Um, I'd love to roll a one here, because that means the Elderberry definitely hits. Okay, it usually hits now. So it's Elderberry on the Shellering, kind of brainlessly. I guess if he just plays one Gravestone, which is very often Pogo, we'll actually play this dry. He didn't want it here either. Um, this is right. We're doing it dry. Can't play the Pogo. Dead Ghost from Pumpkin. Here's the block, so very often we get something. Well, I can surprise him with this next turn. The two damage doesn't really matter, right? I might as well surprise him with this. We had a full block meter there. And he got strike through. Perfect for him. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, it's really hard to play Elderberry into, you know, Pogo and, and, and Cryo Yeti. We're kind of screwed right now. There's no point in Godifying this anymore. What do we do? He's doing a lot of damage, too. I think we don't play around Pogo since he didn't have it last turn, and Cryo Yeti at least this doesn't die. So we're gonna go like this. I wonder if we just commit this to. Well, we'll clear a lane, I guess. Really rough. There's it's, it's Yeti. Ugh. Hate to see it. I, I guess I probably should have evolved the Elderberry here so it lives more. Yeah, so now it only hits once. That was a mistake. We're very likely just gonna win by playing Rotovega. I think we play Rotovega in one, just to it opens this lane up. Codify doesn't look like it does anything. I guess three and four wins, right? Uh, I'm not really thinking clearly here. I'm not thinking clearly here at all. It makes the boomerang live, so that's good. So we can win with two and five. It just matters if he has a removal. He didn't have a removal, so it's guaranteed lethal. It opens up lane two. We steal the block meter, and we won't strike through. I think that's right. Didn't have any amazing play But we're seven and zero. Oh. La 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 la. La, la, la. <laughs> so definitely get rid of the late game. Really like to see a pumpkin here. Good enough. Good enough. Thanks to Rolling Stone though. Whew, that's really hard not to take out on turn one. Am I, would I be insane for going face here? Probably. I don't like the lane it's in because the Rotobiga can't even protect it. I think we just t we just punish this stupid turn one paparazzi. Teacher. 
I'm not really worried about two... two cost tricks, so I'll just do this. Okay. Okay, uh, that's a terrible ramp, because it doesn't matter how many brains he has every turn. Matters how many cards. Really just have to get him not... I'm probably go-defying this if he passes, because the thing we don't want to see is a, a really good thinking cap. That's the thing that will get him back in the game here. So, worth it. And... Next. Well, no, we want this to hit first. Whoops, I forgot about the ability. Stupid, Nicky rolled level threes now. He's ramping to nothing now. Please don't roll level threes and punish my stupidity. Thank you. Didn't matter. The one block meter charge that makes no difference there. So here's Roto Vega. See if he has uh, weed spray. Doesn't even really clear our field. That's a good thinking cap though. Hopefully the uh, strike through and the Brainanas are going to. Uh... Okay. <laughs> I think that's fine, because the main thing we have is we, we wouldn't have him close to Leafa. Oh, it did! We rolled a 1! Mars Flytrap OP. Hell yeah. I think we're good here. I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking to something insane. It's a really good astrocado. Again, four significant threats on the field, for real. It looks like he's going for a weed spray now. Does he have it? The brain nanos will finish him. Though. If he doesn't have weed spray, it's kind of over. Mm -mm. Shit. Okay, yeah, it's digging for cards. He flicks that now. But he just doesn't have the answers. The man is ramping to nothing. Uh, these brain ends. Brain ends is gonna pass. Watch. <laughs> or he's just gonna play teacher or something like that. Here's Trickster. A little bit late to the party. Uh, it's brain end. For three brains. Just getting blocked. Nope. Fine. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Rolling a lot of ones. Not when it counted. Uh, yep. Undying Pharaoh would, would be harsh here. We actually... Look at our block meter. <laughs> la 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 la. He's like, oh, please don't have another Brain Anna. Please. Please don't. Hey, mister, mister, you are dead. Uh, this actually prevents him from playing some trick here that heals him. I don't know if he has the heal. I don't know if he got the heal from the from the thinking cat, but now he can play a damn thing. So, corn countering teacher as per usual. Alright, so we're 8-0. I love how we played against a control Rust Bolt, uh, kind of control Rust Bolt, and Immortitia deck, and the Brinana is like really clutched it out. Brinana best aggro card, clearly. <laughs> Yay! The man threw his phone into a lake. Hey, look, guys, he used to stream. I feel like it's bad advertising for your YouTube channel if you're ranked 23 and it says YouTube. Uh, not good advertising. Shut up and take my money. Fry, I benched all 437 of your videos over a week. I traded my sleep for tips on PVZ here. Uh, thank you. What, on the Prime of Gaming channel? Is that how many videos there are now? I have no idea. I have been keeping track. We're looking for the the strong early game. And we got it. Pumpkin on one, pumpkin corn on two. I think we take those. So the question is, where does this go? I, I guess it's, it makes the corn slightly more useful. We also, again, want the elderberry to be on the ground. 
and for it not to cover a pumpkin. We're also playing around black hole. Oh my gosh. Okay, now we're hacking. Now we're hacking, guys. Hacking intensifies. <laughs> this is not fair. <laughs> this is this is not fair. Not fair. That's the highlight intro. <laughs> Okay, this Mog, this is the greediest Mog. Okay, it, by the way, it's got to be Sumo. That's the only gravestone they can play for free from Cosmic Sports Star. This would be the greediest Mog in the entire history of human existence. Oh, this Mog would be so greedy. If we get a one health minion, then Corn makes five damage go face, makes this lane go face. <laughs> this is so stupid. It's so stupid that I have to try. Come on, one health! One health! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Go! <laughs> Always pays off! Dumbest mug ever, and it turned out just fine. Hell yeah. Guys, this is turn. Th this is turn three. Okay, well, okay, I guess that was a good play. I don't care. I don't care. Becky, let me smack. Okay, Becky, give me health. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. He's like, Whoa. Cosmic Sports Star actually not a bad way of chump blocking this. We're just adding adding attack here. Uh, Brainana's breaking now, yeah, kind of. Okay. Well, we get a card too, so. This is a fine uh, thing to have. Oh, we got plays! Oh, we got plays! Nice goat, bro. This is better than just Astrakata. Come on. Two threats. He left five. He's probably just gonna Logos or him anyway. He got Backyard Bounce. He got Sumo and Backyard Bounce from his Cosmic Sports Star, so props to this guy. It's a really inefficient alien is, which we gave him, by the way. Okay. Oh, the goat's a threat. Guys. Goat biggest threat. Yes! That was good, because now Brinana wins. Otherwise, Block Smash would have screwed us up. This just wins now. La 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 la, see ya, see ya. <laughs> Forgot to award the channel points, we're already 9 and 0 now. The answer is yes, of course. We're going for the big 10 and 0. In a 9 and 0 scenario. Hell yeah. Probably plays PvZ heroes like a sadistic killer, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Extinction event would, oh, you're right, I didn't play around Extinction event. Jeez. Didn't even think about that. That would have been game losing for sure. Slash game winning for him. Fine starting hands indeed. Um. Heights or, or ground here. Play around black hole and not worry about anything else. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, we really want to this not be forced on lane and just procking block for one hit. It's not worth it. Really good. Really, really good. Um, so, Beam Me Up actually wants to go here. So we're going to set this up. We're playing a little bit into Black Hole, but it's fun. That's four damage. I mean, look at it. It's stacked... It stacked one drops. I actually stole block meters. <laughs> we're actually blocking average. Well, no, we're not. We're we're, we're really under rolling. We rolled a one two one. This isn't the same guy. Everyone's just running cosmic for some reason. Uh, so this is fine. It protects us. Uh, should I go freeze instead for a card? We really do need a card for next turn. So let's go freeze. It has the same effect. So if anything is better, because it jump blocks plus one. 
Uh, we definitely want this lane to hit and steal the block meter charge instead of him rolling a 2 and a 3. Eat that, eat that, oh my god. <laughs> and, uh, corn. we just need one damage, so just playing corns is good. And because he, of how many lanes he has to chump block, probably reducing one health might be good. Uh... So should these go face, or should one protect the pumpkin? What is this thing? It's a high diver. Well, it would be a stupid to play it in this lane. It has to be a sumo or a high diver, though. If it was sumo, he plays the last... It probably is high diver, and he's going face for some reason. If it's sumo... This actually is better if it's sumo, too, so let's just do this. Why did he not play that last... He just pressed the button too fast. He definitely should have played this last turn, bro. He just, like, played Plasmic Sports Star and passed. Now, now this actually plays around Sumo because we hit him twice, which is what we want to do. Easy 10 and 0. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't have a better, you couldn't have it work better. And we have been beating control decks. Not a lot of control. There's not a lot of people who play control these days. But, um, we, we faced, you know, an Immortitia that was a proper control deck and then some kind of Pagarazzi from, uh, from Rustbolt, and uh, we got them both. So the Brainanos were, were actually really, really clutch. Everything worked. Everything worked. I, I don't regret putting Corn. Team Up's really underrated as, as sort of an aggro strategy. Just underrated in general. Hope you guys enjoyed. I certainly did. Duh, it's going on YouTube. Peace. This is Fry.